All right, guys, it's time for us to play on Merry-Go-Round Ladder Edition. Both players are one and one now. It's time for the final game of the series. Let's see where they take it. PVZ, Merry-Go-Round. Wrong button. Ah. In the top right of the map here on Merry-Go-Round Ladder Edition, it is our pink player, DJ Zomi. The top left we have his opponent sporting the green, the Protoss pieces. Clanix D's oxygen. Merry-Go-Round has a couple of really cool features that you don't really see too much of. Uh, one of them, for example, is path blockers. You might be looking at the corners of the map and thinking to yourself, that's a lot of airspace. Air units are super good here. Well, air units can't go over there. This blue wall that you see is a path blocker. So it actually makes maneuvering around the edge of a base right here against an air uh, against uh, anti-air very very difficult. So that's something you got to keep in mind. If you're gonna try that, go this direction instead. Especially if they take this base here, you can duck in and out across the cliffs a lot better. Another thing too, just from a nice design standpoint, I really like this. They have a faded gray marker for the natural, and then even though you can barely see it, there's a circle right there under the main. If we go to this unoccupied base down here, you can see that again here. And a uh, single watchtower in the center, which, by the way, for some reason, you can actually put uh, a unit here in this space, and it'll actually activate the tower. I don't know if that's a glitch, but it's it's kind of funny to watch. We might actually get to see that happen here in just a moment if Oxygen puts his probe there. In the meantime, uh, this actually watches the center pathways. Well, you'll notice there's an alternate pathway going around each corner. This means that the Watchtower does not watch all the potential attack paths that you have to worry about, especially since it's very easy to just tell your army to go here, right across the center of this base, and right up into their natural. So you got to be careful about that. Hey, man, Bon. Casting a game here. Nice to see you join us. thought I saw you in the chat before, but it looks, uh, looks like you're finally actually here. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see what's happening. So far, Omi is doing the same thing he's done every game. He's going hatch first. His opponent is going nexus first. The wall off here is a little bit more awkward. As you can see, it has built-in 400 uh, health debris, basically meaning that this debris is a pylon. So I actually think this is one map where we may see Baneling Bust be very, very effective, just because no matter what, there will always be that spot in the wall in that's going to be pretty weak, that you can just bust in. So, uh, Zergs, take note. I want to see you do this to people, <laughs> because I think this map really calls for it. Uh, Protoss is beware, obviously. Do what you got to do. Uh, you're probably going to want to use an opening with a decent number of sentries on this map, just because I think it's going to encourage that style of play. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to see that here, though. I mean, Omi, uh, Omi did go for it, though. Uh, and the game where he used it, he was actually able to win. So we may see him go for that again here. We'll have to wait and see. Spawning pool is up. He's mining a de decent amount of gas. Going to get that quick speed. But that's all pretty normal stuff. Can't We can't conclude anything from that. This wall off from Oxygen has two openings in it right now. It's got one right there and one right there. As well as one right there. That's obviously going to get sealed off, though. Oh. Ah, oh, man, Bon, did you get a job? Is that what happened? You notice you were disappearing over and over again lately. Or you have health problems now. I don't know. One or the other. He was just kidding, he was extra tired. See, I don't blame you for that. I don't blame you for that, Manbon. We were talking about uh, the Hangout on Thursday, by the way. We were like, why wasn't Manbon there? It was fun. Um, yeah, Manbon's living in the EU. So when he's hanging out with us at uh, the Hangout or any other evening events, it's like 4 in the morning his time. So I concluded a long time ago that he was crazy, but apparently he still is crazy. He's just was too tired to actually show up. You know what? Fair enough. Anyway, Corona Boost onto the Cybernex Core, which you guys out there know what that means if you play Protoss. There's probably going to be a gateway attack of some kind. Generally, you're never going to see anybody do that unless they're doing this or DT. So it's probably going to be one or the other. Meanwhile, Omi is getting a Baneling Nest. So that means he's probably going for a Baneling Bust, I think. And I'm going to be fairly amused at that if he does exactly what I said, just goes straight for the debris and runs around the wall. <laughs> oh, the worst part about it, this cannon doesn't quite cover the space, so he can't actually just run straight through here and right into the main. I mean, right into the mineral line. No, the main, duh, main's kind of over there. 
Let's see. Uh, pretty much. By the way, it's not too unusual to see pylon in the wall. It's just because it's one of those things where um, you can kind of scout it as a Zerg player, but like you've noticed he's gotten the bailing nest before he's ever really sent any lings down there to actually check the front for its construction. So it's a little bit of a risk uh, if you want to be able to do it with the best possible timing. If you don't, eh, do whatever you gotta. Decent ball lings run to the front. Anytime you see more than six... That's a good indication that the Zerg player is going to try some kind of aggressive attack. He's checking down here for a really fast third, which is actually unreasonable at this timing. Uh, you pretty much won't see a Protoss grab a third until they hit about eight minutes. If they try to do it any earlier, they're insane. But, you know, or really good at the game and really good at reading their opponent. Anyway, here comes a bunch of Lings running toward the front. Still the second opening here. Oh, you know what? Oh, he may not even need the bust. Is that actually an open space? right there. I might be misreading that. It might be that the hitbox for this debris is a lot bigger than it appears. He may not even have to do anything. He can just If he can just walk right past here, he'll kill the army and everything dies. I, this game might be just about to end. Here comes the attack. Link's running forward and no, but as you can see, the debris is pretty much gone and he can't really deal with that. The Lings are just going to run straight past and go into the main, I think. Oh, and he's being a little bit too indecisive here, losing a lot of Lings. He's going to try and warp in some uh, Morphin, some more Bane Lings right here, and then attack in the mineral line to distract these, his opponent up here. Oxygen is taking the bait. He's going up to deal with the uh, units, but for some reason he's leaving his army down here and letting his probes die, but whatever. Anyway, these four Bane Lings are probably going to march down this direction just a second here, and here they go. We'll watch the carnage in just a moment. Okay, that's been cleaned up. He lost a few workers up to that point. Now he's bunching them up, trying to run away. Oh, surprisingly, everything's still alive, and that cannon is probably going to save it. Oh, still loses a couple more workers. Seven workers lost. Way better than it could have been, but as you'll notice, there is that debris sitting there, and it doesn't recharge its shields, because it doesn't have any. So it's like a worse pylon. Uh, a single follow-up attack from Omi, though he may not realize it, could actually end this game. And, uh, again, yeah, I mean, he's expecting that, oh, my opponent held that. Usual terms on most maps. He's going to rebuild his wall. He'll be fine. Let's spawn right here, guys. Let's spawn right here. It's a killing point. It looks like Omi's trying to set up for a potential counterattack. I mean, he has a couple spine callers that he's thrown up. He's not building any more army units. I think we're going to see him transition to a piece of tech. Meanwhile, back home, Omi is, uh, I mean, Oxygen's using the uh, lead, quote-unquote, lead he's gained by holding that off, and the, the yes, that is a lead. I mean, you might be thinking, he lost seven workers. There's no third. There's no third. That means that Omi is pretty far behind at this point if he doesn't have that by 11 minutes because he actually cannot keep up with his uh, mineral and gas production on only two bases worth of uh, larva. So, as you notice, that bank's getting larger and larger, and there's really not going to be a whole lot he can do about that. Though he does have some... Ah, okay, he's building up for Mutas. I think this is a good choice in this situation. Your opponent is going for a largely ground-centered army. Mutas can do a great amount of damage to this. There isn't really anything to deal with it. There's no uh, Stargates going down either, so he's not going to have Phoenixes. So, at the very least, you can run around and just pick off probes all day and prevent him from ever getting a third. So... Unfortunately, we're probably going to see a thematic repeat of the previous game where uh, Omi just kind of chokes his opponent out by preventing from ever getting a third. Speaking of thirds, just one little tidbit of information about this map that I have not yet conveyed to you. This map does affect one thing because it's three-player. A three-player map will control where your third goes. Ah, ninja third. Anyway, if he was trying to get a normal third base, you would most likely see Omi take it right here. This location right here is a good way to lock down Changeling probe. Mm. <laughs> Changeling's like, ha 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 ha. Anyway, yeah, you would normally see him take it here because this is a little bit easier to defend compared to this location. This location up here at the top is expanding towards your opponent and gives him a lot more opportunities to kill it. And uh, likewise, I suppose you could take this base, but again, it's a little bit too far away, so that one's a little bit awkward to take. I am interested about this. I, I mean, he's, he's going to move his whole army down here for some reason. I, I think he's just going to pass through this location and go up to the top right. I mean, top left. It's a little weird that he has them rally down here, though. Because this might actually give away the location of this base. 
Meanwhile, there's a big move out of three Colossus and a bunch of Stalkers across the map. How many um, Mutas is this? 14 Mutas. Ah, that's iffy. If he can get the Stalkers to shoot at a bunch of Lings instead of the Mutas first and engage at the same time, he can actually kill all those Stalkers without losing too much. But it's going to be a little close. There's no detection in this army, so Oxygen is going to be forced to engage on Creep if he tries. Uh, here comes the Lings. They're going to regroup, looks like, with the Mutalisks over to the bottom right, along with a few Banelings. Colossus at the front. Those Banelings are just going to die. Yeah, not going to be able to get anything done with that. Nicely placed Changelings at the front here, just keeping an eye on what's going on. And hey, look, a bunch of Stalkers that warped in at the back, trying to flank the army, getting picked off for free for the Zerg. It's a nice victory for our Zerg player here. But now he's cornered. There's no escape route out of here, so he has to engage directly. The uh, Lings are going to get fried up here. It's just going to be a question of, can the Mutalis kill this Stalker army? And it looks like so far the answer is yes. No. He can't. Um, and I just looked down and I realized he has plus two on the Stalkers and plus one armor. There's only plus one attack on the Mutalis because they're too weak to be able to engage the Stalkers directly. And with that, I think Omi, I mean Oxygen, has actually earned himself the opportunity to win this game if he can get this army uh, brought back together and push forward. Colossus are still present with the army too, so any attempt at grabbing Lings is going to be shut down. I'm trying to focus down the Colossus. Not actually able to get more than one though without losing a few Mutalisks. And it's going to fall back, trying to re-engage. Mutalisk numbers are very, uh, still pretty decent at 14, but they're incredibly badly bruised, so we can't engage this army. Omi needs to do something to get Oxygen to go back home. If this army keeps sitting here and then pushes up into his base, there is going to be very little he can do to stop it. Here we go. Stu Sprankcrawlers at the front is trying to get into an engagement right here. Lings, uh, the... What just died there? Was that a Mutalisk? Huge blood splatter, regardless. A little, ball, a little group of Banelings actually being put together here. They think this will actually get obliterated by the three Colossus before they get... I mean, two Colossus? Wait, can two Colossus kill them like that? I think they can. It's going to be kind of close. He's moving up here to check on the... See if there's a base. He doesn't see a third... Oxygen needs to be careful here. If he just goes back home, it's going to be exactly what Omi needs, because he's got this extra hatchery down here, and he's building workers down at it, along with another Mutalisk. Oh, the traitor Mutalisk is going to give everything away. It doesn't matter. Here comes the engagement. Banelings moving in toward the front, trying to do some damage to the Stalkers. They are able to do a little bit, but the Mutalisks are forced to fall back up to the high ground once again. It looks like this time Oxygen's just going to commit to the engagement, move straight up the ramp, and go immediately for the Spine Crawlers. The Spine Crawlers do go down. And now it's up to the Mutalist to actually kill the Stalkers and push this back. But now there's actually plus three attack and two armor on these Stalkers. These Stalkers are the beefiest units against these Mutalists at the moment. But they could be almost. And it's too much. Mutalist numbers have fallen to zero. The Zerklings are being obliterated in that. GG.